Um, <clears throat> the card at the bottom of the deck is the moon, and the moon represents um, potentially... Uh, deception, uh, dishonesty, things hidden, uh, but it could also be a phase, right? It could uh, represent lunar phases, you know, cycles of 27 to 28 days, um, and some kind of a time frame or timeline. Um, could represent intuition and the mystery, uh, definitely the yin side, the feminine archetype, uh, that balance between yin and yang, the feminine energy um, in that. Um, so we will refer back most likely to the moon card as we continue to go um, through the reading. But I kind of want to jump in here. I'm slightly curious. <clears throat> um, the lover's card is just that. It's the card representing the lovers. Um, possibly Gemini, because um, it's got that sort of twin duality theme going on. Uh, but this is very much a card representing um, the yin-yang energy, the balance between... <clears throat> the balance or polarity between the divine masculine and divine feminine. Uh, for some of you, this can indicate soulmates, um, twin flames, lovers. Um, for others of you, this could be a head and heart decision that you need to be making, right? Now, um, I do feel looking at the other cards that this has more to do with a relationship. So if you've recently gotten into a relationship, this could be a soulmate or um, a, a really, really great partnership for you. And then I think back to that Sagittarius reading, and I think, man, if you're an Aquarius with a Sag, wow, right now, right? Um, <clears throat> now, crossing use the fool energy. And the fool, you know, for some they think, well, you know, it's, it's about foolishness. But for a lot, it has more to do with, at least on the spiritual journey, it has to do with um, taking that blind leap of faith, right? Setting down your baggage, right? Putting your baggage behind you and going ahead, spreading your wings and taking off on this brand new adventure, leaping forward with faith and trust that there will be something there to catch you. Um, and, and very definitely the butterflies and metamorphosis symbol, right? Change, uh, growth, uh, moving from an uglier phase of life into a more positive, uh, developed phase. Um, so in, in terms of love, this is really about um, trusting, you know, in that partner of yours, uh, trusting that this is this relationship is good for you and positive. Um, <clears throat> now, crowning you is blasted oak. And I think for some of you, uh, because of this position, um, this is what may come to pass or what's kind of on your mind really in that moment, the blasted oak. And that has to do with things that we build with our ego um, that are not based in... Um, I want to say reality, but ego trip is reality too. I'm sorry to say it. Um, but I think what, sometimes we build things that are more um, monuments to what we desire to have. And it may not be in our best interest. For example, um, we see somebody that we like and we say, well, I wish that, um, you know, so-and-so would fall in love with me. Do you really? You know, um, would it be better to pray for... Um, a positive mate for yourself and not name names, but allow the universe to find a great match for you um, because you don't, you may not know enough information about that person to really, um, to know whether or not that would actually be a good idea for you. So <clears throat> blasted oak has to do with that. We kind of get our ego behind something. Um, we, we care less about everyone's happiness and more about winning. Um, we care about nurturing our ego. You know, we put, we put false pride into things. Um, so this is still in a mental space. It may not come to pass. It could just be a mental position that uh, you may be occupying. Now, <clears throat> as an Aquarian, you're an air sign very much so. Um, we just kind of want to be, you know, super duper careful with that. Um, now, the tower is associated with, the, with um, Mars, the planet Mars, and Aries, uh, potentially. So um, just so you're aware of that, it could possibly be an Aries that you have your mind on. Um, but not necessarily, right? Not necessarily. Um, at any rate, beneath you, we see the three of wands, which is fulfillment. Three of wands is about healing. For some of you who have been in that type of a, a health situation, it's been improving, it seems. Um, this is somebody who's waiting for their ships to come in. Um, they are out there, they are loaded up with inventory, what have you, but this is about 
manifesting. This is about taking your passion and manifesting it in the material world. And you are waiting for those ships to come in and you have experienced a great deal of growth along this process. Taken with the lovers, the fool card and so forth, this really does seem to me that um, there's a lot of healing that can be had in your relationship with one another. And we see the snakes up the pole, um, which is a symbol of healing. We see it in the medical profession um, quite frequently. We also see that we have something like a maypole up here, again, with the winding up a pole uh, that is similar to the, the, the I want to say caduceus, I don't know if I'm saying that right, um, that we see in the, the healing arts. There is healing to be had in our sexual relationships with our divine partner um, or divinely provided partner. So there, that's definitely a part of that. I'm thinking sexual healing by Marvin Gaye, but you get what I mean, right? <clears throat> We're hopefully adults here. Um, in the past, if, if you're not, you're probably mature anyway for your age. So, um, but anyhow, we have here the two of cups attraction. This is soulmate energy right here. The two of cups is divinely inspired. We have some sort of a, we have a couple beasts right here, um, that are intriguing nonetheless, but we do have spiritual divine support helping us in manifesting this relationship. And these for sure. Now this reading goes from right to left and not the other way around. So this is how it all begins. But look at the look at the mirror that they are for each other, the heart in the middle. We have these two figures that are facing, that have their hands placed like that. It's a hand fasting, right? Which is an ancient ceremony of marriage. Uh, typically a hand fasting lasted approximately nine years, and then the couple had the opportunity to renew if they chose to do that. Um, this deck is, you know, from a pre-Celtic uh, tradition, a, a shamanic tradition, and um, we see here this, this, this knowing, this is like an eye image here. We see stars, we see hope and guidance, right? We see a flame here between these two cups. We see the flame here in the feminine, uh, the divine feminine aspect. So this is very much a powerful thing. If you've had that attraction to that person, um, this, is, this is about developing that attraction and finding the balance between the polarity of the two of you. Um, and taking that blind leap of faith in that relationship. So good for you. Um, now, that having been said, just a spoiler alert here. So <clears throat> before us, we have the Eight of Arrows, which is the struggle card, right? And we saw this blasted oak energy up here that we don't know if that'll come to pass. That could be mental energy. The Eight of Arrows is definitely mental energy. The, the Eight of Arrows is anxiety, struggle, difficulty, but less from internal and more from personal internal um, energy. You're worrying, right? Um, sometimes Aquarians can get to the place where they're worrying if they don't check that, right? They think themselves too, they think too much about certain things and it can make them um, uncomfortable, right? These signs here taken together tell me that it is right to do the leap of faith, that this is a real soulmate relationship, that this is provided for you in a super positive way. This here, this fool card, I think it's, it almost seems like you should be taking the leap of faith with this person and taking a chance on love here. But for some of you, you, you fear being foolish or being made a fool of. And that's really not the energy of these cards. These are very powerful here. Um, with the soulmate relationship. Again, maybe not for everybody. Maybe some of you are doing something foolish um, with a person, but um, for most of you, I really do feel like you, something positive is happening or going to come in um, in that way. Um, <clears throat> this card here is about rebirth, right? This is about letting go. This is about discovery. This is about fun and joy, letting go of your past that has hurt you before and being able to celebrate your present and, and your present moment with your new lover, uh, right? Who's also your soulmate and your friend and your companion and your helpmate and being able to let go of the past. You know, these are old bones in here. What can we do with old bones? Well, you know what? Let's make a bitch and stew, right? Let's eat some stew. And <clears throat> we look at all of this here and it's like, you know, we have abundance and then some. Now, Sheila Nagig has to do with the, the uh, birth, rebirth, uh, life and death. Um, this symbol here is about the transition from birth or, or from the womb into life, being born into new life. And that's highly symbolic here. 
And <clears throat> it's that kind of an idea. This, this relationship for many of you can be a rebirth of sorts. As you are born again into a, this is what it's really like to be with somebody who's trustworthy and safe, who's not um, doing things and, and being some kind of way behind my back and all the rest of it, right? Um, so there's that. That card represents you. Now, this is your environment card here, all right? The Wheel of Fortune. This has to do with destiny taking a hand and, and karma bringing you and your mate together. You know, even as we see these two here, um, and she's the divine feminine, the lunar, and he's the masculine, the solar. We see the moon and the sun balanced in this robe right here, right? We see again this, this element here of the deer, the horned animal, which we see right here in these partners. So, we see this energy all over this reading here. Very super positive. This is about the divine has brought you what you wanted, you know, um, for many of you, this divine maid. Um, and it had to happen in divine timing, right? Divine timing. Now, this is in the hopes and fears. This hopes and fears. Now, this originally came, started to come out up, uh, right, well, upside down. Um, I don't, I don't really read reversals in here, but sometimes things will kind of shout out. And this seems to me like um, that passion, that energy, that attraction that you have now, there's almost a fear that that's going to fade away and that they're going to be cheating and that you're going to be going through some hardship here with that. And I think there's some kind of mistrust, but I think it's intellectual. I really do think it's more uh, about your fear of letting go. Um, sometimes people believe that, you know, if they worry enough about something, they can take control over the uncontrollable. If someone's going to cheat and be nasty to you, there's you, there's nothing you can really do but walk away from the situation. You can't control whether they're going to be nice or nasty to you. Your final outcome card is a three of arrows, which is jealousy. And remember, je jealousy is an internal state. I'm not reading evidence here of any sneakery. None of these cards indicate sneaky. I think in part you're, you're experiencing some kind of fear about that. Be very careful that your intuition is guiding you correctly and that it's not being deceptive of you. And sometimes we can use our intuition um, in a way and it, there's a very fine line between intuition and imagination. In fact, to reach our intuitive place in our mind, we kind of have to go behind our imagination. That's why, you know, if you listen to guided meditations, a lot of times they start out, you're walking through the woods, you're walking on the coastline, you're walking on a beach. You know, you're doing something like that because by beginning through your imagination, you will reach that little portal where all of a sudden you're not making it up anymore. There are elements and sounds and statements that are coming to you that you're not even creating that consciously. And so... Um, um, be very careful here that you're not creating through your imagination some kind of nightmare scenario that doesn't have to exist. This here is mental energy. The struggle, the blasted oak even being in the, um, in the crowning you situation. Um, this is what you're fearing. You're fearing letting go and trusting in this person that's come into your life. But we see from these other cards, no joke, this is not some trifling person. Right. This is not some uh, king of swords or king of um, wands in reverse person. These are soulmate cards. Two of cups is soulmate. Lover's card is soulmate. Right. The fool is that divine leap of faith as we trust. Uh, allow yourself to trust in this process. Believe me, if they're not good for you, if they're cheating around and doing all kinds of things like that, the evidence will get there. But don't put your anxiety ahead of the evidence. Okay. I don't think that it's going to be there. I really don't. And why deprive yourself of happiness for no reason? You know, isn't it your turn? Is it not your turn to be happy? You have the opportunity at rebirth, at really knowing what those love songs are all about, at really knowing what it feels like to be cherished and respected. Note that in these, although they don't look exactly identical to one another, they're approximately the equal size. And they're looking at each other in the eyes and their hands are matching. These are equals. These are equal partners. This is not an abusive or exploitive relationship here. So <clears throat> with that in mind, um, allow yourself to have what has been brought to you. You've gotten here because you've learned past karmic lessons. The Wheel of Fortune has brought this in because you are ready for it. You are ready for this, and you will experience that wonderful rebirth. 
take your relationship one day at a time, one minute, one millisecond at a time if you have to, because sometimes that's overwhelming enough. Uh, but really do check your insecurities, right? Sometimes we need, to, we need to bounce it off of our best friend. Sometimes we need to, you know, talk to a therapist about our past, do some healing work to let go of the people that have engaged in some negative behaviors around us in the past. But know that you do deserve to be happy and that this may be a very significant chance for you. So don't torture yourself through, through anxiety and worry about things. Try not to be jealous of their ex. You knew that they weren't a virgin when you met them. Uh, pro unless you're, you know, a teenager in high school, they're probably not. And, <clears throat> you know, so when you really think about that, how much energy do you want to put into worrying about their ex or their baby mama or their, you know, the father of their children or, you know, any of that kind of stuff, their ex who may still be somewhat in the picture you know, maybe they're sharing a dog or, you know, whatever the case may be. Just let go of all of that and allow yourself to have some peace of mind and some fun, you know, because um, you really do deserve it. You you guys work very, very hard, you Aquarians. Lots of respect to you. Um, now, what I'm doing um, off camera here is uh, I'm shuffling our angel tarot cards and asking our angel friends if they can uh, possibly provide us with some sort of a message. Sorry to shuffle so long, but I um, I just want to make sure it's mixed up real good. And ah, we have a jumper. Good news. All right. The Emperor. Ooh, this could be your Divine Masculine here that we were just, just looking at in that beautiful lover's card here. <clears throat> Thank you, angels. Um, <clears throat> the card that we have here is the Emperor, Archangel Michael. Organization in Logic structure and discipline and leadership. I apologize about the glare here. I'm trying to make that go away. And so I'll read to you from the book. It's important to cultivate logic, discipline, and order right now. This card signifies that although your dreams are valid and sound, they still need guidelines and organization so they can manifest properly. Create a detailed plan for how you'll proceed and maintain kind but authoritative control over how that plan is implemented. And you know, I have to say, Oops, sorry, I bumped the tripod here. Um, that first part made me think of our moon card here, that perhaps we need to balance intuition and insight with the order and the logic. And again, that's that idea of the balance between the masculine and the feminine, um, because the, the masculine symbolic of the order and the logic and the mystery and the, the chaos and the feminine and the intuitive is represented uh, by the feminine or the yin, right? So that just came to mind. Um, so back to the book. Thank you, uh, angels, for helping us here. Um, feel empowered to take a leadership role in your career in any projects you're working on. Structure and order are your friends as you move from the preparation stage into the execution of your plans. Believe in your ability to be a positive and diplomatic leader. Get organized so that you can be more effective. Additional meanings of this card are the desire to be a success, stability, making wise choices, security, government agencies, law enforcement, the respect of others, and fatherhood. Archangel Michael is the angel of strength and protection who oversees everyone's life purpose. Call upon Michael for courage and strength as you make important and necessary life changes. He can also help you focus your logical mind and left brain talents upon your projects. So excellent, excellent news.